my mom has been a nurse for just about 30 years, a little more than 30 years now. Um, for most of her career, she has been an ICU nurse, but for a short period, they weren't even allowed to wear masks, and they then instituted the one mask per day. And so that is the basic simple surgical mask. That's not an N95. And a lot of nurses felt like this wasn't even close to being enough. So they started bringing masks from home. Every day she was worried about her health personally because of this lack of protocol. And she was telling me, Jenny, how as a nurse can I practice social distancing? I need to be right next to my patient. I need to have them breathe a certain way and move a certain way right after. So how am I supposed to protect myself if they are contagious? Um, so it was just every day kind of worrying, what if? One of my mom's coworkers, she made enough masks for the whole unit. And so she made this little tutorial. She, she at work, she took a piece of paper and folded it in the ways and she kind of narrated it. And my mom filmed it for me. And as soon as she got home, she said, look, this is how it's done. Do you think you could do this? And as soon as I said yes, we ordered a sewing machine immediately and I started making masks as soon as the machine came in. So here's one of my masks and it looks pretty similar to a standard um, surgical mask. It has the, the folds and whatnot so that you're able to extend it out across your face. And then I also have a pipe cleaner across the top so you're able to bend it to fit the shape of your face so that it's more sealed. And then I have an opening on one side so that you're able to pull out the air filter that's inside. So it's that extra layer of protection. This is the antibacterial, antiviral grade. And I've also been making a lot of other PPE recently. I'm calling them mask straps. They just, it's a little piece of fabric and I'm putting little buttons on so that when, when you're having to wear the mask, you don't have to keep it on your ears all day. So when you put it on, you um, attach it to the button and you put it on both sides like that. So that in the back, you have less strain on your ears. And I've also started making a head and neck cover. So it's kind of a replacement to a full hazmat suit because a lot of hospitals do have the plastic gown. They're the gown that kind of start around here and they go down to about your knees. And my mom's fear was that with that, there's still the issue of having your neck and your head and your forehead still um, still exposed, so I've started making these head and neck covers as well. It's just really sad that the solution that we have to do is to take it into our own hands. I mean, I'm just thinking about how a lot of other families that have frontline healthcare workers, they may not be able to have the time or the resources to be able to make this PPE for their family members. So I'm just so fortunate that we were able to buy the sewing machine and I'm able to have this time to make this PPE for her or her coworkers. So the fact that this is not something that is available to anybody and that I'm having to take this into my own hands or other members are having to make this PPE for their other family friend, family and friends. It's just really sad um, because if I wasn't making this or if I wasn't providing this for my mother, I know that she's not as protected as she should be. This is a pandemic. This is a national crisis. It is an international crisis as well. And seeing how all of these other countries have been reacting and comparing that to how our country is reacting is just kind of saddening. I watched a clip of, the, of President Trump the other day, and this was when the CDC finally announced that we should be wearing masks when going out. With uh, the masks, it's going to be uh, really a voluntary thing. You can do it. You don't have to do it. I'm choosing not to do it, but some people may want to do it. It's kind of like a teacher asking students to behave and then the teacher misbehaving. So having that kind of image of defiance within this national crisis is kind of upsetting. You don't necessarily have to be sewing or making these things to be helping with the situation at hand. Doing something as simple as staying home, you know, that can help flatten the curve. That can help make sure that there's one less patient and a lot less infected in the hospital. So. It may seem simple, just staying home, you know, making sure that you're safe and your family's safe, but that's something that can help the current situation at hand.